Well, last week I did these irons to support the top frame for this mud wagon. And I had stood these up a little taller than I thought was necessary. So I did take the time to lean these over to where now they fit up against this framework here. So now this upright section here doesn't have to stand back quite so far. With this shifted back, it actually straightens it up a little bit. And it kind of follows in line with the angle of the back of the seat. You know, they still have to lean back a little bit to get that top bow behind the top of this back seat so that the rain is not going to drip on the seat itself. But it stands a little straighter than when I had it before. So I was doing a little more pondering about this lap joint that I want to do whether it should come this direction or this way, where should the, the lap leg be on the top bow versus the upright support. Well, I have kind of thought about that a little more and I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna leave this leg here in connection with the bow. In the whole process of bending, bending is all compression, so this has a lot of tension on it. And if anything is going to happen over time, this is going to want to straighten out or relax. So if I put the leg on the inside with my joint here, the tendency would be more likely that this could split because of the outward pressure. So I have decided that I'm going to do my joint this direction and leave all of this in contact with the bow, I think it's less likely that this corner here would split out under stress and over time. Now, if I had cut this joint like so, I could actually cut this out on the table saw like I did these. But I think, for the reason I explained, I think I'm going to do it this way. So therefore, I'm going to have to cut this one out by hand. just pull it with clamps but I'd like to not have that stress in that joint take my hacks off and I'll take one cut here and one cut here that'll equalize that bring it right together and we should be good take a little tension off Hopefully these two will close up.
holes where they need to be drilled. Come right through the center. And this is going to be a two inch piece, so I can go through the center there. And I'll come up where we're going flat. Maybe about two and a half inches up there. Now these back braces have kind of a compound twist right through this corner. So I don't think I'll try to bring the brace straight down and fit that. Could be done, but it looks like from that old picture that there's a square corner off of this bottom brace as it goes up. So I'll probably bring it down into here, maybe do a slight little fit. We'll see, and then just leave this space open. That seems what it indicates on that one picture. So guessing maybe about in here. Well, I'm going to start off with 92 inches long. I'm going to do two inches wide and inch and a half thick. Well, I've got a piece of eight quarter ash here that I was going to make my side laterals from. It's not too bad on this side. I did run this through the joiner and kind of straight line this so I can cut off two inch strips. When I got done straight lining it, and you see it's got quite a bow this direction. I snapped a chalk line down from one corner to the other. And in the center, I'm just right at inch and a half. Well, there's a number of places I can square these bows up to each other, but that's why I only put one bolt in here at this time. 
I can still allow this to move a little bit before I finally bolt it into place. The framework for my back bows, they're pretty much set in place. I have them pretty parallel to each other. So now I can just measure front to back and make sure I get the same distance on both. Well, since these bows, both front and back, lean back just a little bit, where I want to joint this into the bows to this lateral, it can't be a square cut. So I'm going to have to cut these in a little bit by hand. I'm just going to scribe where that goes. I have my bows front of the front, back to the back at 91 inches on both sides. Well, I've got them marked left and right, front and rear, and this is going to be the top. What I'm going to do is joint this in the depth of the bows. The bows are one inch. So I'm going to come in one inch, and I have three quarter left over. Remember I mentioned that I thought I would do this at inch and three eighths. I'm going to change the name of this coach to change my mind coach instead of mud coach or mud wagon. I want these to be out flush with the edge of the bow and then there's going to be some 3 8 slats that'll fit on top of the bows. On the side it'll come out flush with the iron and on the rest of the bow as it goes up over top these slats will sit on top and that's what holds the canvas in place. So I made these inch and three quarter. I'm going to leave a three quarter inch tab out here, joint these in for a one inch bow. So I'll just have to cut this angle in by hand and then I can cut the rest of this out on the table saw. got 87 inches between my front and rear bow so 87 divided by 3 be 29 I'm going to put two bows in the center 29 plus 29 is 58 these bows are inch and three quarter so this is going to be the centers of the bows so from center And these bows are an inch thick, but I'm not going to go a full inch deep. I'm going to put a little bit of a shoulder on those. I might cut these to, maybe I'll do three quarter, give me a quarter inch shoulder for these bows to be jointed into this lateral. So these joints I can do on the table saw. So these are my end joints for the front and rear bow. And this is the same material I cut off the ends of those bows. And I'm a little strong here, which I really wanted to be. So I'm a little extra thick here. These rear bows are at seven degrees and the front bows are at five degrees. So I can put this on the table saw and bring this down to where we end up being flush here.
So these will be my two center bows. They're a little extra long in the heel here. So I'm going to put a straight edge across the top of the back and front bow and then position these for height and mark them and then cut the joint that will go into the laterals. Mark them, my joint, and where they're going to trim off. I'm going to do this left one, left one, and then left two, right two, and right one. these just a skosh long so I can file them flush on there. Well, that's the main structure of our top. Now I'm going to put 3 8 six straps down the length of this every so often across the top. Then there'll be a 3 8 by 2 that will come down the side, cover up all these joints, and it'll be flush to our iron. And I'll go ahead, I think, and I'm going to glue all these joints, and then they all get a bolt. Appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching.